At the time of writing, Manchester City are a deranged, depleted, diabolical footballing institution. Six fingers to the cop return with one middle finger from Arna's slot. A stark contrast to the hugs and kisses from Jurgen Klopp. Pep Guardiola's coming. Really? When or when, brothers and sisters, will the city slide stop? I'm putting my unbiased spectacles on and with the help of some City friends along the way, we're gonna break it down. Our City being exposed as the biggest one-man team in Premier League history. Because as you're gonna hear, there's still an argument that we could see City limbs come May. And it all has to start at Anfield where the Battle of the Baldies was taking place, a monumental, massive clash where only one team brought weapons. A staggering statistic at the start. No player on that pitch outside of Erling Haaland contributed to a goal for Manchester City at Anfield. And with a starting 11 as toothless and as tentative as that, it was always going one way. But I wanted to get into immediately what I didn't like about that lineup before a ball was even kicked. You know historically that going to Liverpool is going to be a game of insane press, insane athleticism, ins insane intensity. Regardless of whether it's Klopp or Slot, they pressed and tried to make City feel claustrophobic. And to, to go with physically finished players, these first players I'm going to mention, just, I didn't get it. So try something new, you know? This is a guy that's inventive. This guy that thinks off his, off his feet. He has outside the box ideas, Pep. Why would you go with players that have contributed to you conceding 19 goals now in your last seven games. I just don't understand it. Batterings to Tottenham, to, to Sporting. I don't get it. So first of all, I want to go with Gundogan. I just didn't get him being on that pitch. And I'll go Walker as well. But Gundogan in that midfield with Sir Bosley and Gravenberch. I mean, he just did not contribute with Silva to win any duels. And Walker, I've said it for 12 months. This guy, he doesn't have his pace anymore. And he thinks he still does. So his positioning is awful. And again, he's just a liability. When any tricky, you know, rinky-dinky tricky winger comes up against him with a bit of pace, it's a problem. Long term, even short term, medium term this season, they're not the, they're not the solution. Um, then I want to bring up some players that I just, I was a bit puzzled to see them, um, Lewis and, and and Nunes. I just didn't understand how they were on the flanks against Liverpool. Uh, you know, one, you've got you've got one of your athletic midfielders that could have gone and helped win the tackles and, you know, make the interceptions and contribute on the aerial duels. Nunes is more of a physical presence. Try and mould him like a Gravenberch, mould him like a Joe Linton, try and get him to help you out in an area where you're getting destroyed on transitions in, in recent fixtures. And a lot of the traffic went down the left on the heat map. So he just wasn't able to really do anything with the ball when he received it over there. And then also Lewis, I mean, he's a winger now. Since when? I mean, Robertson, the only player in that Liverpool side that maybe you could have got at, maybe you could have found some joy. He's shown er errors at times this season or he's plateaued. And Lewis is over there. Someone that isn't 1v1, isn't going to have the, the, the pace or the trickery to go up against him and isolate him. L let me ask my friends, where does Lewis play? I don't know anymore. <laughs> In my opinion, I think he's a fullback. I do feel he's a little bit exposed at the minute. He can get pushed off the ball a little bit easily. Uh, I feel like he drives well into the into the, the right areas, but when he gets in them areas, he, he struggles to find that key pass or he sort of panics, dwells on the ball or turns it backwards. I think Pep baits him because he plays him all the time, but I mean, the fans now with these running results are looking at a scapegoat and it's easy to look at, at Rico. I'd be interested to know, like, when your viewers are, are, are watching this, is like, what do they reckon? Is he a midfielder or a right back? Because I, I'll be honest with you, man. I go through periods of the season where I'm like, yeah, he's definitely a right back, 100%. And then like, I'll go for another part of the season where I'm like, nah, he's not a right back, he's a midfielder. I, I don't know. One thing that I've come to the conclusion of, I think he's a brilliant player to have in your team when your team's doing well and winning. I think when your team is not playing well, I don't know if he's a good player to have in the side because you end up just looking at him thinking, what does he actually do on the football pitch? He probably, in my opinion, needs a bit of a breakout. The, the limelight probably needs a, a, a little bit of a, a time on the bench to find his right position. I just don't think it's fair on him, you know what I mean? When you've got a midfield three of Gundogan, Bernardo and Rico, it's not physical, physically imposing at all and getting knocked off the ball. I know the Barcelona midfield of Messi, Iniesta and Xabi wasn't physical, but you're talking Messi, Iniesta and Xavi, not Gundogan, and Bernardo and, and Lewis. At the minute, he's not looking like he should be in that starting eleven. And then the final player I want to mention and I want to highlight is Foden. 
one assist in the Premier League this season. Look at your peers. Look at your friends, Foden. Look at Palmer. Look at Saka. Look at the other contributors. Your PFA player of the year. I know you've been posting it on socials, but you receiving the ball and doing little five-yard passes to your teammates around you is not the cutting edge. It's not the, the, the service that Haaland deserves. And this is where De Bruyne comes in. This is why he's not De Bruyne. I mean, he's meant to be taken on the baton from De Bruyne's and David Silva's, and he's trained amongst these players for so long, but he's not providing that, you know, break, that line breaker, that that defense splitter, that game changer. I'm going to ask my friends, where's De Bruyne? Is he coming back? <laughs> well, bro, here's the situation that we've got, right? We've got no one in this team at the moment is creating any chances for Haaland. So people want to tell me that, oh, well, you need to you need to rest De Bruyne. You need to wait for He's, he's out of contracts in the summer. And let's be honest, right? He's gone in it. He's gone in the summer. He ain't, he ain't staying at City. No way he's staying at City. Not on 400 grand a week, mate, when he can't stay fit. So you mm. might as well throw him in. You might as well. And if he can only do 50 minutes, he plays 50 minutes and you sub him off. But he is still our best player in terms of creativity. So what's the point in having him on the bench? I think he's not fit. I mean, yesterday at Anfield, he came on late. I think Pep's like leaving it late as possible. He did look a little bit more energetic than he has done in the last few weeks coming off the bench. So I'm hoping he was just getting fitter and fitter. I mean, you look at Anfield yesterday, he's took away any with any attacking threat. He's played Nunes and Lewis on the wings. He said he wanted ball control. It's all right having ball control, but you've got no threat. Haaland might as well not play. As a striker early in Haaland, you thrive on chances created and you want people in the team that can create them. It, it is a bit frustrating. It is disjointed. And uh, hopefully Kevin De Bruyne can get back to some sort of rhythm and, and, and start creating them chances again. I'd get Walker out. I'd get Gundogan out. Those are the first two because those two, for me, physically, are final 10-minute players at this point. They're not able to really enhance this starting eleven. Um Liverpool game, I would have liked to have seen him try. And I know he was never going to do this, but, you know, let's just let's just do this. Back three and some, some wing backs. I mean, you know, we've actually seen him do this at Anfield before. He played Foden at left wing back, if you remember, one time. But just put Vardy all there because they need goals and he scored three of them this season along with John Stones. This would have been something different, you know. Get Matthias Nunes in the midfield. Get someone next to Silva that can help him. You know, get Grealish on the pitch. Get Grealish, a foul winner, a big game player. You usually play him in the big games to win the fouls and to, to, to kind of, you know, draw fouls and win the ball at the pitch and give you a, an option as an outlet. He didn't play. Uh, but Grealish, the Villa version, would drive at players and, and dribble and, and, you know, dis 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 discombobulate defenders and, and drag them out of position. Bring that Grealish back. That's the £100 million man. And that's why I'm going to make him my next square as a player that drastically needs to improve and needs to put a stamp on this team, show some authority. You're experienced, you've been here for years, you've seen title winning teams, you've been in title winning teams. You need to start pulling your finger out and being a part of the solution for Pep. So he needs to get himself into the starting 11 because I think he could be crucial. Grealish in the 10. Like I said at Villa, you were a freedom footballer, you were a game changer, you were a jaw dropper. You need to take the shackles off and get back to what you was. Start causing havoc. If Foden is not going to pick out those passes, he's not going to make, you know, the game change, then Grealish, you you give it a go. Um, but I want to ask some friends, what have they been frustrated by Pep the most? If you were to narrow it down, is it the transfer business? Is it Pep? Is, has Pep done anything in this run where you're thinking, yo, you're the best manager in the world, you could have done better here? Or is this all down to recruitment? Is it down to the summer? Is it, you know? I, I, think, I, think, I think the whole thing fundamentally comes down to the recruitment, right? Also, a massive stroke of unluckiness, yeah, because of like Rodri getting an ACL, man. That, that, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's literally the one thing that, that derails our season. They gambled on our season. They gambled on our season. That was poor from the board. I think Pep, yeah, there, there have been games where maybe he's got something wrong. So, like the Liverpool game, for example, I thought Grealish should have started that game. Like, uh, he's a player that we knew at some point in that game against Liverpool, we was going to go through a period of getting cooked, right? Because every team does that at Anfield, right? You, yeah. you, you see Chelsea there. Every, you go through 20, 30 minutes of getting cooked, right? Mm. Grealish is literally like one of the best players in the world to have in your team for when you're getting cooked. Why? Because he'll get the ball, he'll get a foul, dead into the situation. Pressure off. He, does, he starts on the bench. He started Nunes left wing when he should have started Nunes in the middle because he got pace, energy and a bit of physicality. Starts him on the left wing, Nunes was trash. So I think there are games where Pep maybe have got some stuff wrong, but then as well, the players have to take some responsibility. He maybe got a little bit arrogant and thought that he had the squad to do what he wanted to do. A couple of injuries later, and we've realised that you take a couple of cogs out of his system and, and, and it, the machine don't work. 
And I feel like now he's trying to put square blocks into round holes. He's trying to pigeonhole certain people in positions, trying to sort of like, it's also like he's trying to patch it up and just get over the line to January with it because we've made a mistake. You know, we haven't got the players. It's all right, people say, you know, you've got a good squad. We have got a good squad and a lot of them players are great, but they can't play in the Guardiola system. You know what I mean? You, you can't go to Anfield when the Teus Nunes and recall Lewis as your wingers and expect to be putting it on then. I always said, as soon as Rodri got injured, yeah, I always said, if we can get to January 1st within eight points of Liverpool, I think we've got a chance because we can buy players and we can go in the second half of the season. I think we can hunt them down. We still play Palace. We've won one in four. We play United, who look like they're now cooking under our room. We play Villa at half 12 at Villa Park. I just don't see, unfortunately. I really want to believe that we can win these next six games before January. Because if yeah. we do, I think we could be in a. I think we still got a chance. The problem is, I, I, I think we might drop points in two of those games. At which point, Liverpool are going to be like what, fifteen, sixteen points clear? That's it. So I, I felt that Liverpool, the Liverpool game, was the game that we needed to win. The way I'm going to say it is this: somebody sent me a graph, and we've won six out of the last seven Premier League titles. Right, the teams who have not won a title for 20 years. They've been building for 20 years. This team's been building for 10 years. This team's won one title in 33 years. If we have to take a year, even two of you is, to build again and go again, we've got to take it. We, we can't moan. We've been in a great run. But there's a hell of a lot of teams out there been making excuses that they can't beat Manchester City. They cheated. They, they, we can't beat this machine. And now this machine's fell away. There's no excuses. There's nowhere to hide. Why aren't you winning the league now? Why aren't you going toe to toe with Liverpool? Why aren't you in the top three? I mean, you guys at Chelsea, you spent a lot of dough, a hell of a lot of dough, rebuilding, rebuilding to get where you are now. Apparently, we're the only team that feels like you we're not allowed to do that. Let um, the pretenders go and fight for the title. We'll be back next season. Don't worry, this is it. Top four, gotta get top four, man. Just get Grealish in there, get him back to his old self, get Nunes next to Silva, get him trying to cut out the transitions, learning. The, the following in the footsteps of a Graven Birch and a Joe Linton who have moved position now and, and flourished and have been able to help their teams physically be competitive in midfield. Um, and yeah, if, if, if Rico Lewis could be in this team, if De Bruyne could be in this team, um, then so be it for sure. You know, Rico Lewis could maybe come in here, like I said, be a wing back and, and contribute. And, you know, if you do put Lewis in there and just take Savino out for a second, just to give you an option. Um, well, actually, I might even keep Savino. And I think Savino has actually been quite the contributor this season. For City, even though he hasn't got loads of stats, I think he's been pretty good. This allows you to go wing back, Lewis on the right wing back spot with his energy, and then you can go back to a back four and Savinho, or sorry, not Lewis, Silva can push forward and Lewis can go into midfield. So it just gives you a bit of flexibility on and off the ball. And I'd like to see something similar to this, if possible, from Pep. But let's see what happens against Nottingham Forest. Well, 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 I mean, we were waiting to see if those changes, not all of them, but some of them were there, which was nice. I mean, Walker was taken out for a Kanji at right back. We didn't get to see Nunes in holding midfield. Gundogan played next to Grealish with De Bruyne in there as well. Um, but Grealish played centrally. De Bruyne never knew if he would be available to start, but he did. And he brought a bit more electricity into the wings as well. So we're getting there. We're getting there in regards to what looks like a team to be fearful of. Um, obviously, it is Nottingham Forest. They are far lesser opposition than Liverpool. So that context has to be put in there. Are they completely back? Well, they picked up some injuries as well. Ake, uh, Kanji, both of those players having to go off. If they are out for long periods of time, then walkers get back into the conversations again and then the circle repeats itself. So it's too early to say Man City are back. Obviously, those clips from my friends were before the Nottingham Forest game. Do they still believe Man City are out of the title race? Do you still believe Man City are out of the title race? They're nine points behind Liverpool now, but it is going to ebb and flow if they keep picking up these injuries. The big thing is De Bruyne being involved in both the you know, first two goals. What a fantastic finish from himself, but also setting up Silva. And this is the key component to what they've lacked is the person to put the passes through the lines and to play the final ball. And he has been, you know, legendary at that over the years. It was just whether or not he was going to be able to come and play these matches. Um, Grealish in the middle. We wanted to see something fresh, something different. We saw it. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him really play in the middle under Pep. Most of the time it is on the flank. Um, so again, this is something fresh to see. And yeah, Akanji at right back. Just the back four having a little bit more speed in it. But they did still have a few moments on the break in Nottingham Forest where City still look a little bit vulnerable. So yeah, we'll see. 
We'll see. You guys let me know in the comments. Are City in the title race or are they out of it still? Do you think that they can, you know, go on a run at the end of the season if De Bruyne's back, even with no Rodri? And really, well and truly, smash up the likes. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. In a bit, people. Peace.